Hello everybody and welcome to my 48 VBA tutorial and this tutorial is going to show you how to carry on doing your list boxes. So uh, this is something that's been requested by quite a lot of people with list boxes is people want to be able to have two list boxes and move the information from one into the other. So I'm just going to copy and have two list boxes like this and then I'm just going to have a button on one side with a couple of arrows. So the idea being that you click on it on one side, click on the arrow and then put it on the other side. Um, get rid of the value because we don't want it to have selected something at the start. Um, so what we do is we'll have two boxes this one we actually want to set to um, B rather than A because at the moment it's going to be blank and in fact completely at the moment we don't want it to have any values really so we just delete the row source completely um, but what what we're going to have a problem with is as we move stuff out of here and put it in here, this one's going to get bigger, this one's going to get smaller. So as we saw at the end of the last tutorial, we need to be, every time, just uh, ch changing the row source of both of these. So if we go into our code, and let's get rid of that because we don't want that, we're just going to set ourselves up a sub, so private sub, update row source and we just want to have a couple of counters so count a as integer then counter b as integer what we want to do is just find how far down in this row it goes so let's put counter a equals one counter b equals one and then with this workbook dot sheets sheet one Ooh. going crazy type in random thing and with uh, if you haven't seen how to use a with before then it just means any code after this I can just put a dot and it will pretend it has this bit at the start so it means I'm not going to type out this word but dot sheets over and over again so let's just put do until dot cells counter a comma one dot value equals nothing loop and then counter a equals counter a plus one so that's going to find the bottom of the first column and then what we want to do is just go user form one dot list box one dot row source equals and then we always want it as sheet one a one two and then a and then we want to do add counter a at the end so it's going to make it equal to a1 and then to the value of the counter um, we then want to just put an if statement in say so if counter a equals one then so if it's found if it's blank in the first one then we're just going to set it equal to nothing um, because there's no point us just having a blank one in there so equals nothing else set it equal to a row source and then we just want to copy this and do it again but with counter B and column two and then this box two and then we also want to change that to be in there as well 
So this is just going to count down the rows, it's going to find the first empty cell and then it's going to set the row source of our list boxes equal to that. And it's going to do it every time. So if we go into our user form, um, what I'm going to do is I am going to go into the code of the user form, uh, which we're already in, and I'm going to go to user form and initialize. So the user form initialize event um, again works like the normal worksheet event, but it's going to activate when this user form is initialized. Uh, and we just want to call update row source. So whenever the user form is opened, it's going to run that update row source. Um, and then let's just put in our workbook open event. Uh, user form one dot show, and then we we'll press play on this. It's just going to load it up, and then you'll notice that our our user form row source is bang on, and then this one's blank as it should be. Um, the next thing we need to do is just make this button so that it moves the information across. So this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, first thing, first of all, I'm going to take the value of the user form and put it into a variable for me. So uh, I'm going to test whether it's done anything at all. So the code. So if this box one, and um, always put our user form one first. Dot this box one dot value and we want to put is null and then we'll just put exit sub because we don't want it to do anything if they haven't selected anything and then so if they have it then we want to go dim uh, ingredient I probably spelled that wrong uh, string and ingredient equals user form one dot this books one dot value so that's going to take the value out of the user form and then what we want to do is we want to find that ingredients value on our spreadsheet so dim counter as integer do until this workbook dot sheets sheet one dot cells counter one dot value equals ingredient counter equals counter plus one So that's going to run through and find the row that the ingredient's on. Uh, make sure we initialize our counter. And then once it's found it, what I want it to do is just delete that range. So let's put this workbook dot sheets sheet one dot range. And then we want a Ampersand counter and then dot delete open bracket and then just put XL up. And what XL up means is it's just going to shift the cells underneath it up one. So it'll delete that cell and then shift the other ones in that column upwards. Um, we then want to, once we delete it from the first column, we want to add it onto the second column. So again, we want just another counter, so let's just copy this. And counter B. And we want to go until it equals nothing. And then once it's got to the bottom, we just want it to take the value of ingredient and add the value of ingredient in there. 
So ingredient. And then finally, we just want to do our update row source at the end because we've deleted one off here, we've added one on here, so we just want to completely refresh the row source. So that's why I've done it in a separate sub so we can just call it again. We don't have to write it all out again. So with any luck, this will work now. Um, we've written quite a lot of code. So if we go in here, click on pasta, click on across, and it's added it to the bottom of the first one. So something's gone slightly wrong there in our code. Uh, and it's because we have put one in there rather than two. So let's just start that again. So lobster, move it across, goes across onto the other side. Prawns, goes across onto the other side. Tofu, haddock. Lobster, prawns, tofu, haddock. Let's put some rice in there because I want something that isn't um, just fish. Um, and let's put some salt and pepper in. Um, and so that is how you create two list boxes, one that feeds into the other. So that's quite a useful thing and you can put it on quite a lot of different stuff. Um, obviously if you reverse engineer it you can put another button that will put stuff back over onto the other side. Uh, hopefully that answers quite a lot of people's questions about how to use multiple list box is. So thanks for listening. Any questions, please drop them in the comments. And I hope to catch you in the next tutorial uh, when we are going into uh, frames.